medical condition. It's a message from the body that it hasn't felt safe for a very long time. And specifically, it's a message that it hasn't felt safe to be you. If you're the one with autoimmunity, it hasn't felt safe to be you for a very long time. Now, that is a quote from this week's main podcast episode, which has been resonating with many of you. And I wanted to follow up on diving deeper into the biology, especially after receiving this thoughtful question from Maya, a therapist working with patients and clients in Oregon. She said, Dr. Amy, I listened to your autoimmune episode and I'm working with several clients right now with autoimmunity. And I'm wondering if there are specific emotions or self-beliefs I should be leaning into with them in therapy because they have autoimmunity. Maya, what a great question. And the answer is yes. I will directly answer your question at the end of this episode. And I want to share with you briefly where you can find that uh, longer podcast episode for this week. So if you come to biologyoftrauma.com, you will find the podcast. And this is episode 133 on autoimmunity and childhood trauma. Let's dive into the biology behind it. Because as we look at what is happening in autoimmunity, autoimmunity is one of the manifestations of a biology of trauma. And when we look at the epidemic of chronic health conditions, autoimmunity being one, there are specific trends that are happening for the last few decades that tells me that this is a larger problem. Stored trauma in the body is a larger problem than what we have ever needed to deal with before. So whether you are a healthcare practitioner and you're seeing them because they're coming to you with either the symptoms of autoimmunity, fatigue being one of the most common symptoms of autoimmunity, or you're dealing with the actual diagnosis, or maybe you're a therapist or body worker, yoga teacher, life coach, you are going to be seeing more and more people with autoimmunity. And this is one of the manifestations. It's one of the profiles, if you want to use that word, the profiles of a biology of trauma. And what does that mean? That means that there are over 50 million Americans every day affected by autoimmunity. And so knowing this, knowing the emotional impact of autoimmunity, knowing the self-beliefs that they hold that are unique to autoimmunity, or I should say more common in those with autoimmunity, will only help you be a better practitioner, or if you are the one with autoimmunity, help you navigate your healing journey better. Let's talk about the biology behind autoimmunity, but really it is the biology of trauma. And what does that actually mean? Because it gives us the tools to know how would we take someone like Maya, you're working with clients with autoimmunity, how do we take them and have their health issues influence how we work with them, how we navigate them on their journey for deeper healing because we know that they have autoimmunity or some other physical health condition. And let me take you inside the body to show you exactly what's happening at the cellular level with autoimmunity. Now, as I explained in the longer episode, 133, that you should definitely go back and listen to that one because I explained how autoimmunity targets high-functioning women. Autoimmunity targets high functioning women. And this is not a coincidence. This comes down to the nervous system dysregulation of high functioning women. Nervous system dysregulation. What is that? Why is that so important for us to know that this is part of autoimmunity? Because nervous system dysregulation is this ongoing internal stress that then will have a breaking point. And as we look at the internal stress, especially for someone with autoimmunity, we see that some of their stress comes from the beliefs that they've held about themselves, specifically that it's not safe to be them. It's not safe to be their authentic selves. If people were to really know them, if people were to know that they do that thing that they're embarrassed about, if they were to really know that I think this about myself, or this is one of my coping strategies. This is how I get through. They would 
they would leave me. They would abandon me. They would not like me. And so it does not feel safe to be me because I feel either unlovable. I feel different. I feel like I don't belong. I feel like there's something different about me, broken about me, defective about me, something inherent about me. And so this stress of not feeling safe to be me means that I have to try to be someone else all the time when I'm with other people. That is stressful. That is a lot of stress for a really long time. And what happens is that there comes a breaking point because the body can only hold so much stress at a time. And this is when we start to see surface um, issues, uh, the, the conditions, even the diagnoses. Some never get to the diagnosis. Some have autoimmunity and don't know that they have autoimmunity. But the stress of the dysregulation and that stress of not feeling safe to be me is where it often starts. Now, what happens next is that it creates changes in our biology. So that nervous system dysregulation creates changes in our biology. One of the key changes that it creates is known as oxidative stress. And this is what we need to look at because it will be important for the repair tools. Once we know that nervous system dysregulation creates oxidative stress, then we can see the downstream effects of that oxidative stress. We can see that it will create activated microglia or those aspects of our brain inflammation. We'll get the brain fog, the decision fatigue. It will feel like it, it, it just, it's hard to think. It's hard to make decisions. I need everything to be easy right now. We have activated microglia that is sometimes being directly caused just by oxidative stress. There are other ways that our microglia or the immune cells in our brain get activated, but this is one reason. Higher levels of oxidative stress are also going to cause mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, it also damages our proteins and damages our DNA. That's for a different episode because I want to lean into the mitochondrial dysfunction. This is why... Fatigue is often one of the most common symptoms of autoimmunity is because of the impact of oxidative stress on our mitochondria. Let's step back and, and look at the stress and survival responses that we have. When you have stress, when you need to engage a stress and survival response, your ability to respond is dependent on having the energy to respond. Your ability to respond to stress is completely dependent on your having the energy to respond. Well, what if you don't have that energy? When you don't have energy, even a small stress will be too much. Even a small stress will be too much. In my world, we call that too much, too fast. One reason for going into a trauma response. The other reason though is too little for too long. That's the other reason for going into a trauma response into the trauma biology. And when we have mitochondrial inefficiency, meaning our mitochondria are not making the energy that they could be making because they've been damaged, then you are not going to have as much energy and you're already running on empty. You're already running on fumes, which means that when a stress happens, you don't have anything in the tank to be able to have you respond to that stress. And when that happens, your body in its wisdom says, we can't fight this. We can't overcome this problem by fighting it because we don't have the energy to fight it or we don't have the energy to run away. If we wanna use the language of the stress actions, fight or flight. If we don't have the energy to fight, if we don't have the energy to run, then our body is not going to let us do that. And that is when we will start to feel ourselves go into overwhelm rather than fighting or fleeing or running 
simply because our body can know, I don't, I can't make that much energy for you. So mitochondria are really important for understanding the biology of trauma and how it even is created and perpetuated. And so looking at autoimmunity, we see that nervous system dysregulation, nervous system dysregulation is going to create more oxidative stress. More oxidative stress is going to cause mitochondrial dysfunction, but here's what happens. And this right here, what I'm going to say next is really the essence of a biology of trauma. The biology of trauma means that that same damage to our mitochondria is now going to create nervous system dysregulation. It becomes the feedback cycle. It becomes the hamster wheel. The nervous system dysregulation is creating more oxidative stress, which is damaging more mitochondria, but that damaged mitochondria creates more oxidative stress and further dysregulates our nervous system. And this is why our body can get caught in this progressive accumulation of symptoms. And maybe you can think back earlier in your life when you used to be able to do more, you used to be able to have the energy to do a lot more, you, and you want that back. But over time, the body, and Maya, for you, your clients with autoimmunity, I'm sure that this is what they would resonate with. They want a previous version of themselves to be able to go back to what they used to be able to do, what they used to be able to have the energy for, the days of focus and clarity, and they don't have that anymore. And then the depression has deepened, the anxiety has deepened, and it's literally because now they are feeding off of each other. The nervous system dysregulation is creating more mitochondrial damage and the damage from the mitochondria because of the energy depletion that it causes, not being able to make as much energy, it feeds back and keeps our nervous system dysregulated. Why? Because our nervous system needs energy. When you think of what our nervous system does for us, it runs our entire body. It runs all of our organs, our systems. It does all of this in the background. And all of that activity needs energy. And so if your body is sensing, I just don't have the energy, then you are always living on that edge of overwhelm. So let's get into practical action steps. So for Maya, your clients who are in it with autoimmunity, it will be important for you. Yes, you are the therapist. And it will be important for you to understand this biology because the emotional aspects of autoimmunity will never by themselves clear up with the emotional work. It will also take immune support. So N-acetylcysteine is a powerful antioxidant, especially if they have symptoms of the brain fog and that primed microglia. But they will also really need the mitochondrial support. And that's what I want to lean into here. We need to know how to support the mitochondria, the damaged mitochondria, in order to be able to support them in their energy production. The more that we can support the mitochondria with their energy production, the more energy we will have to face life's problems. The more stress we will be able to hold and not go into overwhelm. And overwhelm is reinforcing that trauma response and that trauma biology that will only create more damaged mitochondria. So we don't want to do overwhelm anymore. We don't want to do emotional overwhelm. We don't want to do any kind of overwhelm anymore, knowing now the impact of that on oxidative stress and damaging our mitochondria. And in order to help not go into overwhelm, we need to support our energy production. When we have more energy, we can respond to life's problems. When we don't have the energy, even the itsy bitsy problems will feel like big mountains. And rather than be able to climb it, we'll sit at the bottom, cry, and feel sorry for ourselves. But none of that will also be enough for autoimmunity because the biology piece is essential. And then I want to come back to answer your question, Maya. 
when you are working with clients with autoimmunity, these are some areas that you can lean into specifically. What about the, I don't like myself? One of the questions that I started asking my patients with autoimmunity was, when was the first time in your life that you remember having the thought, I don't like myself? For me, I remember that happening very distinctly at age 12. It was such a clear thought. And that was at age 12. For some, it's earlier. And just because that was the first time that I recognized that I had the thought doesn't mean that that feeling of not liking myself wasn't there before. It had been there long before. That was just the first time that I remember having that thought. But it gives you a place to go as the therapist, Maya. It gives you a place to what was going on in your life at that time and be able to be very targeted because you're asking a very specific question that those with autoimmunity will be able to relate to. When in your life do you remember first having the thought, I don't like myself? We then can also lean into the fear of being authentic, the fear of being ourselves. So what I shared with you was that this idea of it doesn't feel safe to be me. And in fact, it causes stress. It causes me stress to think of showing up as my authentic self. And whether this is showing up to a family reunion or a family dinner, or maybe a group of colleagues, whatever it is, this will be something that resonates with most people with autoimmunity. This idea that they're showing up and they feel that they need to cover up something. They need to hide something about themselves in order to feel safe to show up. It does not feel safe to be their authentic selves. One other question that I like to ask is this idea around being perfect. There is a correlation in the research that associates perfectionism and autoimmunity. And this is why it autoimmunity tends to focus on high functioning women because we have learned to fake it. We have learned to fake it until we make it. We have learned how to push through. We have learned how to be as perfect as possible and to beat ourselves up when we can't. These are the specific elements, Maya, that are so common and a shared trait in those with autoimmunity that they are questions that you can lean into and ask. As I shared in the main episode, what do we do? It requires the healing on the three levels. So if you want to review the three levels of healing that any stored trauma will need, then that will be in the longer episode. Again, that's episode 133. I'd love to hear your questions and insights. You can drop questions and insights over on the show notes, biologyoftrauma.com. Search for this specific podcast. There you will find the link to the show notes. And I would love for you to subscribe and leave a review. It actually makes quite a big difference for other people finding this information. And so just know that you are helping someone else out by taking a moment right now, hitting that subscribe button and leaving a review. Until next time, I'm your host, Dr. Amy. Remember that healing happens in layers. Layers. We don't need to do everything today. It happens in layers. So wherever you are, whether you are the practitioner like Maya, working with those with autoimmunity, whether you are one with autoimmunity, you don't need to do it all today. We just do what feels safe enough for today because the most important thing is for us to start staying out of overwhelm so we can break this trauma autoimmune cycle.